Howdy folks, in this video we are going to introduce the last of the three elements that we're going to be talking about in this whole video series, specifically revisers or filter revisers. Now uh, all three of the elements are incredibly important, they all work together in concert. In my opinion, revisers are the most fun, uh, but part of what makes them fun is that they're also the trickiest. Right, But I think uh, once you get the hang of them, you're going to see uh, just why I enjoy them as much as I do. So, without further ado, uh, let's get started, uh, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xosx, and I'm in the Concepts Prime tab. We're in the Concepts Prime tab because uh, there's so many concepts that we're going to cover. I decided to break it down into a couple different videos, which I think is going to make it a bit more digestible. Uh, here in the first tab, we're just going to look at the prime concepts, or the you know tip-top concepts, the most important ones. Okay. So uh, speaking of which, let's start with the definition. Filter revisers, what are they? So uh, filter revisers, or just revisers, they all do the same thing. They all create a revised filter context, and then they run a sub-expression within it. Okay. Another thing you could, uh, another way to think about uh, revisers is that they're the things in DAX that change the filters, or they're the only things in DAX that change the filters, to be a bit more specific. So if you want to change the filters uh, in, in the DAX language, you have to use a filter revisor. That's just how it is defined. If the filters changed, guess what? A revisor uh, was the thing that did it. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay, we get that they changed the filters, but what is this sub-expression uh, uh, business? Well, the sub-expression is the bit of code that is going to be run after the filters have been revised, right? So uh, here we've got our three common revisers listed out. We've got the calculate function, we've got uh, measures, and we've got the calculate table function. And all three of them are going to change the filters. They're going to create a revised filter context, right? Uh, but there's a reason that they create that revised filter context. It's because we want to do something with it. The thing that we want to do with it is the sub-expression. It's what we want to do once we've changed the filters, right? So with calculate, that sub-expression, those instructions we want to run after we change the filters, are here in argument one of calculate, just like a calculate table. There it is, at argument one. There and there are the bits of code that we're going to run after we change the filters. And with measures, right? With measures, uh, that same bit of code is just in the definition of the measure. It's part of the, the measure's metadata, if you will, which is a fancy way of saying, uh, when you define a measure, everything you, uh, everything you type in to the right of that first equal sign, you could think of it as the formula, and that's a perfectly fine way to describe it. It is also the sub-expression for the measure. It is the thing the measure will run once the filters have been revised, right? Now, one way I help, uh, help us understand this, right, is that uh, when you see the code written out, it's hard to remember that this happens after the filters have been revised. You tend to, most folks, especially if you have an Excel background, will look at this and think to themselves, okay, argument one is whatever this number, the number that this bit of code produces. And it's not the result of the instructions, it's the instructions themselves, right? So the way that we're gonna help remember that, right, is uh, we're gonna think of this uh, sub-expression argument as being frozen, right? So when you type out a calculator or something like that, or I should say when you use one of these revisers, right? Uh, your sub-expression, we want to think of it as being frozen, right? We have frozen it, we have not run it yet, and we will only unfreeze and run it after we change the filters, right? Okay, so, 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 so. Uh, uh, revisers, they uh, create a new revised filter context and then they run a sub-expression within it. Okay, so that means there's basically two steps here. There's the creating the, the new filter context, the revised filter context, and evaluating the sub-expression, right? So if we just think about like calculate right here, we, we know that this is the bit that's going to run after we revise the filters, right? But before we can, you know, unfreeze this and run it, we have to go revise the filters, right? Well, so that's, that's sort of the first bit here, so creating a new filter context. Well, we start with whatever the existing filter context is. Now, here in my this particular example, uh, we've just said it's blank, but it could be anything. There could be no uh, temp tables in here, filters in here. There could be 100, there could be 1,000, it doesn't matter. Whatever the filters were before, that's just what we start with. That's the existing filter context. And then the reviser will create a new filter context uh, using two sort of modes, two methods, right? There uh, is the current row filter, right? And by that, we mean that uh, if you use the uh, reviser, as part of an expression column, what it'll do is it'll go find all values of the current row and add them as filters. This is an automatic process that it does. Now, we're not going to go into that uh, in detail in this particular tab, uh, but that is the first way that we're going to add filters, right? And then uh, it, it, once, we're, once we've done that, we can also, with all these revisers, provide uh, optional override filters. 
these are temp tables that we uh, give to the reviser and say, here, after you've added current row filters, also add these filters. And again, more on that uh, in the tabs to come. Right. Regardless, though, right, uh, we start with an existing filter context. We add some filters through current row filtering. Uh, then maybe we add some filters through override filters. These are optional. Right. And when we're done, we end up with a new you know, filter context. This is what the filters look like post revision. This is the revised filter context. Well, what do we do with that revised filter context? Well, uh, with it hanging around there, what happens is, right, we go sort of into a second phase where we evaluate the sub-expression. So we go get the sub-expression, right? There's a sub-expression right there. We get it. We unfreeze it, right? And then we evaluate it under this new filter context. So we evaluate this bit of code, not under the uh, the old uh, filters, which were blank, but under the new filters, where we've got a filter for shift equals lunch, right? Or whatever you, you know, uh, define, right? Okay, so, and if you imagine, if I evaluate this with a filter of shift equals lunch right there, well, then I'll get the number seven. If I evaluated this same sub-expression under a blank set of filters, I wouldn't get seven. I'd get a bigger number because I wouldn't be looking at units for lunch. I'd be looking at units for everything. Because I just wanted to look at lunch units, I had to first revise the filters and through some combination of current row filtering and override filters uh, make sure that when I was done the filters looked like this so that when I added up all the units I got the number seven which is what I wanted okay so that's how it works for calculate and uh, for measures it works almost the same way uh, calculate and measures are almost the same thing in fact if you kind of squint your eyes it's a little bit difficult to tell these things apart uh, they both they both take a sub-expression revise the filters and then run that sub-expression in the new filters right the the principal difference is that with measures, the sub-expression is defined as part of the metadata and is not provided uh, as an argument the way it is with calculate. So again, uh, you, you define your measure, you type in uh, you know, what your formula is, which becomes a sub-expression. When you then call the measure, when you then call the measure, the measure says, okay, you know, I'm a reviser, I've got uh, two things I gotta do, revise the filter context, then run the sub-expression. So it starts by taking the old filter context, and uh, just like with Calculate, uh, it'll do current row filtering, which we'll explore more in a minute. And you can also uh, provide override filters, which we'll actually explore in later chapters. You can do both of those things, and when you're done, you will end up with a new revised set of filters. Revised set of filters, right? Uh, you could change them to anything you want. In this particular example, we've set it to shift equals lunch. Okay. Well, what do we do with this revised set of filters? Well, again, revisers have two things they got to do. We just created the revised filter context, and then we run the sub-expression. That sub-expression right there. So we could think of it as unfreezing, right? We unfreeze it, and then once it's unfrozen, we can run it in this new filter context. So we run this bit of code right here to get the number seven, okay? How does it work with calculate table? Well, calculate table is, uh, you know, it, it's the same thing as calculate. The only difference is you use this one when you want to uh, have a sub-expression that returns not a single value, like uh, a number or a single date or a text string, a scalar to be specific. You use calculate table when your sub-expression that you want to evaluate under new filters uh, is a, uh, well, the fancy name is a table value expression, which means it's going to return a table, an entire temp table, right? So if, if the code that you're going to write in here uh, will spit back a temp table, you need to use calculate table. You cannot use calculate and vice versa, right? Uh, if you, <clears throat> if you uh, want to uh, use a, if you want, if your sub-expression is going to return a scalar, you have to use calculate. You cannot use calculate table. That's the only real difference between these two. But otherwise, it's the same, right? So it, you know, takes the existing filter context through a combination of current row filtering and override filters. It produces a new revised filter context. Once that revised filter context is in place, it takes its uh, sub-expression, it's frozen sub-expression, if you will, uh, unfreezes it, and then runs it in the new filter context, right? Uh, this time producing uh, not a number like seven, but a temp table like uh, shift with these two, you know, with burger and pasta in there, right? Now, if we were looking at this uh, same expression, under the uh, previous filter context, the, the, the former unrevised filter context, we would have gotten more dishes. But because we're just looking at lunch, we just get burger and pasta. Now, um, <clears throat> there's fancier ways to understand this business of being frozen. And uh, if you were wondering, uh, you know, uh, when we say it freezes the sub-expression, that's just a way to help us remember it. It will not uh, improve the performance of your GPU. But it's a handy way to think about it. And when you look at these uh, revisers, we're, we're going to practice the first thing that we want to do is uh, look at that first argument, look at that sub-expression, and freeze it in our mind. And remember that this is the instructions, not the results of the instructions. This is only what's going to happen after we change the filters. right? Now, uh, just a, an extra bit of clarifying here, a little extra bit of clarifying. Uh, we talk about, uh, when we're talking with about revisers, we will just say sub-expression. We'll just use that term, right? But there's actually all kinds of sub-expressions happening in the DAX language. Uh, the, the sort of the, the big long name for the 
the sub expression that gets uh, evaluated under the new filters is the filter contextualized sub expression argument, which is kind of a mouthful, and I don't want to have to say that every you know three four seconds. So uh, we can shorten it a little bit to the revisor sub expression, which is actually probably a happy medium. But we're going to be even lazier than that because that's just sort of the way that I roll. We're just going to call it the sub expression. So when we're talking about revisors, we say sub expression. We mean the sub expression that we freeze and then run under the new. Uh, we unfreeze after we. We revise the filter, so we run it under the new uh, filter context. Okay, so um, that's it, right? I know uh, you're probably very interested in uh, points B and C here. Well, what do we mean by current real filters? How does this override filtering thing work? Yeah, that stuff's super duper important, and I don't want to uh, downplay that. But I think often people get so obsessed with how these things work that they forget what they're actually supposed to be doing, right? And so at their heart, revisors, regardless of the methodology, right, uh, regardless of the methodology, they produce a new filter context, which they can run a sub-expression in. That's their actual you know, reason uh, for existing, right? That's what they're here for, right? OK, but that said, if we understand that, we understand that they you know, create the revised filter context and run the sub-expression in it, with that in mind, we could go look at sort of these two different modes, these two different ways we can change the filters using a reviser. And we're going to do that in the next video. So I sure hope that was helpful, and I will see you next time.